These are the brand new Continental GP5000 tyres, all new tyre from a German tyre company, and they replaced the popular and long running GP4000. Now, GP4000 was introduced 14 years ago, although that original tyre changed a lot during those 14 years. But the GP5000 is said to be better in every performance metric. And the really big news is not just the launch of a new GP5000 clincher tyre, but also the launch of the GP5000 tubeless tyre. Yes, that's right. Continental has finally joined the road tubeless party. Now, it's really exciting news because, well, a lot of people have been waiting for Continental to do a tubeless tyre before making that um, move into a tubeless. And it just gives more validation to the tubeless market, really, that a brand with the heritage and history of Continental are putting their hat into the tubeless ring. So, a really good news for the tubeless uh, market. And if you're not interested in tubeless, you're not um, a fan of tubeless and all the mess that can be um, involved with tubeless then there's a good old clincher. So they're basically keeping both camps happy. Um, clincher if you want inner tubes and tubers if you want a, that punch retention you get from a tubeless tire. So that's a new GP5000. Let's take it out of the box and show you. So these are the clincher tires and a 25 mil whip. I brought you back from the launch in Tenerife. Yeah, that's right, they had the launch on the sunny island of Tenerife. So smooth roads, nice weather, amazing scenery to ride the New tyres, but more on that later. And here are the new tyres. There we go. Do the smell test. Smells like a tyre. So these are the clincher tyres, and we'll start with the clincher tyres. Continental has built on the solid foundations of the GP4000, because let's not forget, it's a really popular and really competitive tyre. We did a survey a little while ago, and it was voted the best tyre in its category. So a really high benchmark, a high standard for Continental to, to try and improve on. And they've improved on the 5,000 compared to 4,000 by improving the existing technology, the black tree compound and a veteran breaker and so on, but added a few new technologies which they say gives it better performance in its own testing. Let's give you some figures. And they are saying that the revised black tree compound leads to a 12% reduction in rolling resistance and the new veteran breaker leads to a 20% increase in punch resistance. They also say comfort has been improved, and that's down to something called active comfort technology, which essentially is some elastomer type material integrated into the layers of the tire construction, which helps to absorb some of the vibrations generated when riding over a rough road, but not at the loss at the expense of speed and rolling resistance. They don't put a figure on that improved comfort, probably a difficult thing to test, given so many variables when you're testing a tire for comfort. The other new technology involves lasers and it's called laser grip and it is the laser engraved patterns on the shoulder of the tire. So similar to GP4000 but now laser engraved and it gives it a sort of rough texture and that is said to offer improved cornering grip. So more aggressive lean angles available in corners due to this new laser grip. And it's also giving a slight aero benefit but they don't put a number on uh, the improved aerodynamics. So those are the key details on the improvements to the new GP5000 over the previous 4000. This new clincher tyre is coming in four whips. So you've got 23, 25, 28 and 32. And that really reflects the change in the market over the last few years in terms of increased tyre whip. The lightest tyre, 23, comes in at 200 grams. So one for the weight weenies definitely. But I reckon the 25, 28 be really popular. And the 32, for those wider tyre endurance bikes would be a really interesting option, especially if you want maximum comfort. So that's a new GP5000 clincher tyre. As I mentioned, there's also a GP5000 tubeless. Now, I don't have my hands on a set yet, but I will be getting some soon. And essentially, they use all the same technologies in the clincher tyre. So the same black chili tread compound, the same veteran breaker, which gives it, according to Continental, class-leading punch resistance compared to all its key rivals in its own testing. They also say, interestingly, that the tubeless version is 5% lower rolling resistance and 5% better punch resistance than the GP5000 clincher. That's due to less materials in the construction of the tyre, so less friction in the tyre, which leads to very small but measurable um, improvement in rolling resistance. And it's one of the few tubeless tyres that have a proper like veteran breaker style puncher band in there as well. A lot just rely on the thickness of the carcass and the rubber and that tubeless sealant doing its job to seal holes. Now, tubeless compatibility is a real issue and it's something that Continental say they are working on with other tyre and rim manufacturers and hopefully you might see some resolution on that front next year. But they do say they've tested their tubeless tyre with all possible rims and they've not had any problems. They don't provide a list of compatible rims, they just say it should be compatible. They've used a softer material for the bead to help 
installation onto rims. And well, the real test will be when I get my hands on a set of a tube of tires to test them. And I'll do that and I'll do a film of me testing the 5,000 installation on different rims. Let's really see how it works and see how it compares to other tires. The GP5000 is coming in three width options. You've got a 25, a 28, and a 32. With a 25 weighing about 300 grams. It's about 10 grams heavier than a Schwabi Pro 1. So in the right ballpark. And remember you've got that veteran breaker in there to provide that additional punch resistance as well. So it should be a really compelling choice. Those then are the key details on the brand new Continental GP5000 tire, available in clincher and tubeless version. I'd love to hear your thoughts and first impressions on the tire, so put them in the comment section below. Now, earlier this week, Continental flew a load of journalists, including myself, out to Tenerife to ride the new tires and speak to some of the engineers behind the tires. And in the next video, I'm going to play two interviews with two of the product managers and people responsible for the new tire, so you can hear from the horse's mouth about this new tire. And on the other side of that, I'm going to talk to you about my first ride impressions because we've got to ride the new tires on a brief test ride. So two interviews with two engineers now, and then on the other side of that, you can find out what they like to ride. Yeah, so my name is Edwin Gautzwart. I'm responsible for research and development for two wheel tires, so for motorcycle and bicycle tires in the business unit. So you've launched a new uh, tube of tire. What's the biggest challenge in launching and developing a tube of tire? Yeah, the, the biggest challenge has been to, to have a tire which really keeps the air with uh, allows also the mountability. I mean, we have a lot of tubeless tires out there that are very difficult to mount. And uh, what our philosophy is, it needs to work easily with the floor pump to, to mount these tires. And the biggest challenge with tubers is like compatibility with different uh, rims and tire combinations and installation is kind of quite tricky. What have you done to get around that kind of issue with tubers? So what we kind of did is we tested this, this, these our tubeless tires on a, on a bunch of, of uh, in the market available rims to see from, from the smallest to the, to the biggest diameters to find a, a, a bead geometry that fits for, yeah, for most of these or for almost all of these rims. And you say that the, um, the tube is faster than the clincher. How, can you explain more why it's faster than the yeah, you, you, We have less material. I mean, okay. we, have a, we have an inner liner, which is a very thin layer of rubber on the inside of the tire. And uh, the tube is always thicker. So if you have more rubber, you have more material, which is moving, which is consuming energy. So by leaving out the tube and, and having only a small layer of rubber inside, you kind of, it's, it's on the positive side of the balance. Okay. What would you say the biggest benefits of tubeless with the GP5000? The biggest benefit is that you, that you have more comfort. You can ride with, with lower pressures, there's no snake bite risk. Uh, and with the sealant, uh, getting a puncture, even when you get a puncture, it's, it's sealing by itself. So you, yeah, should not have any punctures so at the end of the day. You would say that it's a better tire than the clincher version? It's a more comfortable tire. Okay. Yes. Okay. So for the clincher version, uh, yeah, we, we focus kind of on, on getting the, uh, yeah. the best all-round tire even better. So it was not one focus that we said it needs to be faster or it needs to be uh, more comfortable or it needs to be more puncture resistant. We said, okay, all of these parameters, they need to go up. So we were really looking for ways how to reduce the rolling resistance or increase the speed, how to increase the comfort and uh, how to increase the puncture protection. What would you say to anybody deciding whether to go tubeless or stick with clincher? I mean, <laughs> you know, that's a, a bigger decision I have to make is yeah. for a tubeless, which you never had done before. So, for me personally, I, I probably stick still with the with the, with the clincher tires. Okay. Me personally, because uh, I don't like the hassle with the with the milk. I'm, a, I'm an old school guy. Uh, <laughs> I like to yeah. If I have a puncture, then I can change the tube. It's it's okay. I don't have that many punctures. Um, so from that point of view, I would still choose the, 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 the tube type one, but I can recommend the tubeless one for anybody who doesn't want to have the, the, yeah, the risk of punctures and, and then have to deal with it on the way. So my name is Jan Niklas Sünger and I'm the product manager out at Continental. So we're here for the launch of the new GT5000, which is a clincher and a tubeless tire. Were the two tires developed at the same time or was a clincher done separately from the tubeless? What's the, um approach with the development of the new tube. So these are two separate products. They uh, incorporate the same technology, but the uh, start of the of the development clearly had different times. The tube of tire is a big deal because Continental is kind of late to the tubeless uh, party. Mm -hmm. How important is getting the tube of tire right and making sure it delivers everything you kind of want in a Continental tire? Well, we have to be confident with our products we're putting out. So uh, for us, we took 
the time to have the safe cheapless system that um, gives you the full uh, package you want because the demands on the road are typically different than to tubeless on uh, mountain biking and we are confident right now and we are thinking that this will have the tubeless package and will give the whole tubeless interested uh, road cyclist a boost and a boost of confidence that well they can use it right now okay. and you've had tubeless technology on the mountain bike world for quite a while now it's Correct. been quite difficult transferring the technology to the road market Great. Yeah, it hasn't been uh, difficult to say because it has been a, a new development in technology. So we got our knowledge from the tubeless system that is on the mountain bike, but for the road it's different. So the inner liners that you find in the, in the tubeless uh, tires are not included in the mountain bike. So there is a complete new design for the approach. Mounting to the tyres can be a bit tricky, uh, compatibility issues with different rims and tyres. What have you done to try and minimise any issues with insulation? Well, for, for uh, our standpoint we tested a lot of tyre rim combinations and we recommend only to use uh, tubeless recommended rims by the manufacturer. Okay. So uh, as a customer you, have, you are on the safe side if you, if you follow our instruction and then we are, we are confident that it works and the safety is uh, the most important part that the tire doesn't jump off the rim so please follow that and for the for the mounting and inflation uh, that's what we are really proud of that you can just use a floor pump and you recommend using sealant with it or can you use yeah, it without you, sealant? you should you should use okay. the sealant uh, the the recommended amount is 30 to 60 milliliters you should use it because there are so many combinations out there and small holes can make a big difference. We are confident in our product, but the whole system works with sealant, is okay. developed with sealant. So that's a tube tire, back to the normal pincher tire, which I know would be a really popular tire. You made some quite impressive claims for roll resistance and comfort and, and so on, and punch resistance. Yes. Where those gains come from? Is it all in the material development that you put into the tire? Well, so there has been some involvement in, uh, like increasing in the in the compound which is called like chili and uh, the the that's marginal gains right so for the for the big jumps we we found it's uh, the difference in puncture protection is found at the uh, vectron breaker which is completely like new generation of vectron breaker and for the rolling resistance and uh, vibration damping, we also have this uh, active comfort technology. And this is like a carcass design. It's like on how many layers, where to put what technology. And by redesigning and starting from the bottom, it's really putting the tire together in, in the right uh, amount and the right technology at the right place. And so the, that's where the rolling resistance and puncture protection is like. <laughs> the, the previous GP4000 lasted, I think, it's 13 years? It 2014. Okay. F4, sorry, for 14 years, yeah. Okay, so you think the new 5000 will have a similar long shelf life? Well... Or is there 6000 on the horizon already? No, how, no, no, no. How no. far ahead are you planning? No, uh, we are definitely planning not to have 14 years. Mm -hmm. till we, we make the next big step. What you have to understand is that we had the 4000 and it already is a different tire than uh, the one that was released in 2004. Mm -hmm. so. But we only change the name if it's something completely new. So what we found, we had some new technologies. Then we can start to think about a next generation tire where we start from scratch. We know all the stuff, we just don't throw it away. But it's not like we add a feature in, make it like an add-on feature. So we wrote the whole recipe for the tire new, and that's why it's a 5000 now. Okay. How much more development potential is there in the, in the tire, in terms of like the compounds and like decreasing the weight and improving roll resistance? How much more scope is there for improving tires? Generally. <laughs> uh, as you know, they're uh, in research. They're constantly looking for uh, new stuff, new materials, mm -hmm. and 
as we have right now, if you ask me before I would know about the new carcass design, I would say, well, carcass is a carcass. But right now we found a new uh, feature, how, how to build it. So the improvements come with uh, an invention and the invention doesn't grow on trees and you have to put in a lot of work. So there is still improvement available for sure. And we have, I have some, something in mind, but I can't tell you because <laughs> we are working on that. Um, I, I can't give numbers or percentages. Uh, I'm just confident that there will be improvements, but the 5000 is like it's the new level. And we work from here. That's the benchmark right now. Well, that's interesting, I thought. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, as I mentioned, we we're in Tenerife to ride the new tyres and I got to ride them. One ride, 45 kilometers in distance. And, but if you know Tenerife, you'll know the roads out there are silky smooth. They like riding on glass and probably any tyre feels good out there. But due to the shortness of the ride, the smoothness of the roads and riding an unfamiliar bike, the new Cantel System 6 with the brakes back to front. I can't really tell you much about them. I mean, they felt really, really fast, but then probably any tyres feel fast on those smooth roads of Tenerife. But probably the more interesting feedback was on the descent we rode. So lots of fast, lots of slow twisting corners and lower down there's some dampness on the roads. So that transition from the dry to damp roads with lots of varying corners gave us opportunity to really put the tyres through the paces in the corners. And they felt really reassuring. Loads of grip when you really in the bike over. There's no uh, discernible kind of slip when you really push a tyre hard. They just felt um, to coin a overused phrase, they felt confidence inspiring. I felt no issues with pushing the tyres as hard as I dared on an unfamiliar road, unfamiliar bike with the brakes back to front as well. So they felt really good and first impressions good. But as I said, the ride was too short and you can't really tell much from such a short ride on such smooth roads. But I brought a set of tyres home. These are the clincher tyres, 25mm wide. So I'm gonna fit into a bike and I'll get riding them and I'll give you an update video maybe in the next two weeks once I've logged load miles, let you know how I get on with them. I don't have any tuber tires yet, but hopefully I'll get my hands on a set soon. And what I do, I'll do some insulation tests on different rims to see how easy they are to install. And I'll do some actual riding to see what they're like. And I've ridden quite a few tuber tires, so I've got some um, good benchmarks to compare them to. But first impression, yeah, it's a good tire. They clearly built on a really good tire and they've looked to improve it in a number of ways. They haven't ruined the really, really good tire. They've just added some useful extra features. So I think it would be a really popular tire. I mean, the GP4000 has a lot of fans. A lot of people love the tire. And the 5000 is as good, if not slightly better. So yeah, not a bad upgrade if you're looking for a new tire. But yeah, it's been a new tires. I hope you enjoyed watching this. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel by hitting that red button. It means a lot to us and it means you won't miss any future first looks on new products from us here at RoCC. But as ever, that's all for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all again next time.